how to create a background. So exciting. I'm so excited to do this. Welcome back to the Artist of Apathy's Photoshop tutorials. Obviously, I'm the Artist of Apathy. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a background. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Google search for an image, or you can draw or paint your own. You don't have to be an awesome illustrator to use Photoshop. Sad, but true. So true. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking my pen tool and I'm outlining the horizon with my Bezier curves. After that, we're going to right-click Work Paths under the Paths next to the layer and do Create Selection. From there, you'll be able to drag and drop it into a new image. And the Bezier curves are finished. And now we're going to drag and drop it over there like so. Get rid of the old work, you don't need to save it. And we're going to use the free transformation tool to make it bigger. Just remember, size matters. Yes. Yes! Alright, you can hold shift to keep the proportions, and if you're foolish like me, I went ahead and grabbed a copyrighted photo, but it's real easy to get rid of. Um, just don't get sued. So if you grab the clone tool, you can hold down the alt key and take a snapshot of the area. And then you can just paint right over it. And it's going to keep all those lines. Go ahead and pause the video and play around with it. It's a pretty cool tool. We'll be using it a little later again. And then, whenever you use the clone tool, sometimes you're going to have messy, blurry areas. So what I did is I grabbed the paint tool, and then I just kind of darkened the image around that spot where we removed the photomediaservice.com. Sorry about that, people. Don't sue me. Don't. Words Rocky Balboa, sue me for what? Half of you probably don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. That's good. Alright, so we're gonna grab a new image. I chose to grab a sky with pretty little happy clouds. Remember that painter? Little the Bob the painter? We're gonna paint a happy tree here today. That's a happy cloud right there if you ever seen one. See, look how great that looks. Now, magically, I threw a castle in there. You can't even fathom how fast that was. You see how awesome that was? Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool once again. I'm going to start making outlines with it. Create those Bezier curves. Make a selection. And don't worry about being too exact. I'm going to throw this so far in the background, it can look like shit and it doesn't matter. That's right. That's right, I said it! Okay? Stop judging me. Alright, so we're just going to go all the way around. The bottom doesn't really matter, so I just did that really fast. And I threw it in the background magically. So fast you can't even fathom. You see that? Now, right now, the image is pretty much done, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the pen tool once again, and I'm going to outline this little pool of water. I'm not a big fan of water, but I am a big fan of something else. You're going to see. You're going to see what I'm a big fan of. Okay? Alright, so after you finish your selection, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and that's going to create a layer where we can actually control the hue saturation. So once you do that, you'll see on the right hand side, you'll see hue saturation. Now I want to change the color to make it look like blood! Blood! I love blood! Yes I do. I love blood. Sorry about that. I just freak out. Sometimes I get itchy. Itchy just thinking about it. Now grab the burn tool. And we're going to burn it. Burn it! Burn it! Basically what this does is it gives it three dimension, it gives it shadow, it brings it to life, it makes it fit in with the photo. Fit in. Come on people, do it. Do it good. And then if you notice up there, there was a discolored rock. So I grabbed the clone tool, took a snapshot, and started coloring in that rock. Now it looks like snow. <laughs> looks like snow. <laughs> I snorted too much snow. So now we're going to grab uh, different tools here, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hue saturation, we're going to make it a little rustic, a little old, a little ancient, ancient. And then now I'm going to go into filter and texturizer. This is going to give it a painting texturizer. And then I'm going to go to liquify, filter liquify, and I'm going to grab the swirl tool, and I'm going to kind of just pull at the ends. You can do this any way you want to, you can make it look pretty. I did it really fast, I don't really give a shit about it. And then I'm going to grab my name with a type tool, and I'm going to add it to the bottom. Now, if you have a Wacom board, Wacom board, you can go ahead and just type it in yourself or write it in, make it look all artsy. 
but I'm not a very good painter and I don't have an expensive board. I use the mouse, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and just type it and I'm going to go to filter and liquify and then I'm just going to pull at the ends. Make it look like I painted it on there. Isn't that beautiful? It's awesome. It's awesome. So beautiful. So beautiful. We love you. Stop it. Alright. Now what we're going to do for the final little add-on here is I did inner glow and then I did color burn and then I selected a dark color. So it gives it that kind of rustic map looking feel. It's pretty awesome. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Visit me at artistofapathy.com. Music's by Nox Arcana. Castle of Nightmares. Nightmares! Thanks for tuning in.